With Heart Rhythm TV from the Scientific Session in San Francisco, I'm Dan Aliash. Um, and we are here today discussing efficiency in the EP Lab. You know, our most precious resource in life is time. Time to do more cases, time to see our family. And so I'm joined today by a group of people who have presented on, perf on perfecting the process of improving efficiency. I have Dr. Jose, Jose Osorio of Grandview Medical Center. Welcome. Thank you. Jenna Humer of Porter Adventist Hospital. And Sri Sundaram of South Denver Cardiology, my partner, and I'm very happy to be joined by him. Thanks, Dan. So, um, I want to start off with our first question, uh, which is, for people that uh, want to improve the efficiency in the lab, okay, can you, can you all outline a good starting point for where they should go? Start with just make sure basic measurements. Figure out how long does it take you to go from one case to the other? What are the holdups? Record things. We recorded data over a three month period and that's what we figured out where we were doing really well and where we were doing poorly. And Jose, I know that you are, um, have a great reputation for the, for the ability to do multiple AFib ablations in a day. Can you, can you talk to, to the Heart Rhythm TV viewership for you know, where should they start off in trying to improve those metrics? So I, I think I was, I was lucky in the sense that we started in a new hospital with the chance, and I had already been working with the same EP lab manager for five, seven years. We had a great relationship. I think the starting point is having a good physician champion and a lab manager that both are working together for you to be successful. It's, it's teamwork. But when we started at this hospital, what we did is we started putting together a team from administration, someone from prep and recovery, someone from the lab, someone from registration, a nurse, and a tech, and we all walked together the same journey, the same path that patients would take. We went and walking each one of those steps and decided benchmarks. We said a patient is gonna arrive here at this time, how long does it take for your team to get this patient from A to B? And we set expectations. And <clears throat> at the, after that, for each one of the steps, we continue to measure in terms of uh, how to be practical about this. Measuring this, we uh, standardize, we customize the recording systems we use, not the EP recording systems, but like the, the Philips WIT system, the documentation systems. We customize them to obtain the data points we wanted. So now every month we review those data points. And for us, the process of uh, EP lab efficiency was tied together with a quality improvement process for the lab. It wasn't just about going faster. It, was, it is all a quality improvement process and efficiency became the, the, the end product of that. I, I love that you say it's about quality improvement because quality is about getting the patients the care they need in a timely manner. And so efficiency is about quality. I completely agree. Um, so Sri and Jenna, I have the, uh, I'm the beneficiary of your hard work. And um, would you mind sharing kind of your high impact interventions, maybe your story from getting to improved efficiency in our lab? Well, I'll start. The first thing we did was say, after we recorded it, we figured out that the biggest change we could make was going like to like cases, a similar ablation with a mapping system to another similar ablation with a mapping system. The turnover time was very low, as much as like 20 minutes. But we went from like a pacemaker to a mapping system. That was turning the room around completely. That was like 58 minutes. So we made a big change with scheduling. By just working with our schedulers to change how we did it, that made a huge difference. And that was the first thing we did. I think it also you like to use different mapping systems, so it was, it was helpful that you were willing to work with us and do one mapping system a day so that the team only had to bring one mapping system in the room, <laughs> limited the amount of complications we would have with technical issues. <laughs> no, absolutely, no, that, that makes a lot of sense. Like to like in a lot of different ways. Now, the reason why I invited you both here, Jose and Sri, is you, know, you primarily use the Insight system. Jose, I think, uses a lot of the Cardo system. Any of the tools that you've used within those mapping systems to improve your efficiency? So what resonates, what both of them just spoke about here to me is that to make the lab efficiency, you cannot focus on a single physician. You have to focus on everyone. So standardizing how the physicians in the group practice was something that we, we, we did. So even if someone is doing a case with a biosensor absor mapping system or arrhythmia or an Abbott, we still, the tables are the same. The 
you know, the basic equipment you're going to use, the decapolar catheter, the CS catheter is the same, the, the transeptal sheaths are the same. So we don't, we, all our techs know that the tables are going to be identical for each and every physician. So that removed a lot of the, the, the guessing game or the ability to accidentally open the wrong device. So this is, this is where we started with standardization. And I think then all mapping systems today offer possibilities and tools, you know, that have allowed us to improve our procedure efficiency. So, so this is unanimously. But it's, it's interesting to have this discussion in the context of multiple mapping systems and multiple uh, uh, different procedures we do. Uh, you, you have to standardize every, every spec, uh, aspect of it if you want to be efficient. Yeah, I, I will agree, and I don't think it's the mapping system. You can be efficient with any mapping system. It's, more to, it's more to the predictability. My, you know, I do the same case the same way every single time. And so the staff knows exactly what equipment I need in what order and when I will use it. So it's always ready to go. So it becomes so predictable, and that's how you build in efficiency. Absolutely, and I think that you know, touching on the patient experience, I know, you know, starting off in our group, that you you have a you advise me on how to interact or interface with the patients to improve efficiency and also to improve their experience. So, can you share that? Sure. So, I, I think we've talked about this. Was call the patients the night before. It relieves a lot of anxiety, so they know exactly uh, what they're having the next day. It answers any last-minute questions. So, in the morning. Patients come in and they have less questions, so they're actually ready to go for the ablation. And it, it's a big patient satisfier because how many physicians actually will call the patients the night before? We get comments all the time saying, I've never had a doctor call me personally. Absolutely, yeah. Thank you very much. So, uh, Jenna, this question will be directed towards you and also Jose, please feel free to, to chime in. But EP is a team sport, right? Yep. And so how do we engage our lab to really you know, the rising tide raises all ships. Yep. How do we all work together to improve efficiency and I motivate? Think, like Jose said, it, it, it's a team sport. Um, everybody coming together, working um, well together. And to build that team, we do after hour um, events. You know, COVID, we couldn't do that. And I think that's something that the team missed. So you guys come to, you know, after hour events. And I think that builds a more cohesive team in the lab because they get to know each other outside the lab. Um, and when they work well together, they turn over the room faster. They can, they know what each other is thinking and that just, makes it more efficient. And, and once again, it's, it's so interesting to be a part of this conversation because things you say, I'm sure you're saying, is, is, it's a, the same thing we've been doing. Uh, the lab staff, the nurses and the techs, to me what motivates them is the fact that they have a predictable day. That's, our lab doesn't have turnover, we don't have travel techs, travel nurses, we've never needed, we have perfect staff retention because they know they walk in at 6.30, they're going to be out of there by 4.30. And, and there's very little deviation from that. So I think what we did to support the staff more than anything is made sure the systems were in place that if there's a new physician, he or she needs to fall into that method. If there is a, a, a new staffing member, staff member, they are going to, to follow. So they, they know what to expect when they walk into work, just like the patients should know and uh, we call our patients the day before as well, and uh, it makes a big difference. So I think the predictability for the cases is good for the patients, it adds safety, it adds efficiency, but it's fantastic for the team and the retention of the staff. Wonderful. So I think um, one last question, you know, we're cold, hard, data-driven people, so would you mind sharing our turnover time for the rooms, um, Sri or Jenna, as well as Jose? Sure, we, when we looked at this, we started initially at 58 minutes. We're now down to 23 minutes, wheels in to wheels out between cases. Um, so you're measuring from patient leaves the room to another patient oh. enters the room? So I don't measure that way. We chose to measure from catheters are out to starting the next procedure, and it's uh, 35 minutes. So wheels out to wheels in is about three minutes. And the biggest driver for that is having a dedicated EP. Now we have a manager and we have the supervisor that doesn't have clinical functions, doesn't have in-room functions, and he gets there uh, every day about 5 a.m., maps out the whole day, and he's responsible for bringing patients to and from the lab, um, taking back to prep and recovery. Every day at 2 o'clock, there's a meeting conducted between the EP lab 
manager supervisor, cath lab manager supervisor, prep and recovery registration, where we then decide the order of cases and call patients and, and set the stage for the, the successful next day. Amazing data, amazing stories and information. In the interest of efficiency, I think we're done. But thank you for joining us with Heart Rhythm TV.